Good morning, everybody. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. LOL. You know.
lift up your voice and say now, Hallelujah. You have won. You have won it all for me. Come on, let's just worship right now. Death could not hold you. watching right now. Our cash app has went up on the screen. Uh, those of you who are here right now, take your phones out. I want to pray over your giving right now before we even go any further. And the Holy Spirit just said, pray right now for the offering because how many know it's better to give than receive? Yeah. Amen. So why don't you just do that? I'm not going to push too hard, but I know I got givers in the audience right now. I got givers watching me right now. I got people uh, who just love to give. Matter of fact, if you couldn't give, you would lose your mind if you couldn't give. Uh, so I just want you to give. When you have it, just hold your phone up or hold your envelope or hold whatever. I, I, I praise God. I don't think we have no envelopes. Glory to God. We're going paperless. So I want you to just hold it up. Uh, if you're giving by text to give, the number is on your screen right there at, at 703-454-5131. If you're doing the cash app then, then just go ahead and dial us on Light of Life Church. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hold it up in the air. Wave it like you just don't care. If you believe that God is going to increase your finances, somebody say, Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Father, we bless you right now. God, we thank you for this gift that we're giving back to you. Hallelujah. God, you've blessed us so we can give back 10% of what you've blessed us with. So God, we honor you with our giving and with our obedience right now. God, do me a favor. Those who don't have to give, bless them even more. But those who want to give, let them give with cheerful hearts. Those who are watching, God, from New Jersey, from California, from Kentucky, to Charlottesville, to Cleveland, let them give, Father God. Give them a double portion of what you have in store for them. It's in Jesus' name that we pray and ask. Bless all the givers. Amen. Amen. Come on, grab yourself a morning, man. standing, I want you to locate on your device or your Bible 
Job 2. Job 2. If I don't give you a verse, what do you automatically assume? Verse Go one. to the first verse. Job 2, from the New American Standard, goes a little something like this. Again. <laughs> I'm the only one got it. <laughs> Again, there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan himself also came before the Lord. Verse number 2 says, And the Lord said to Satan, where have you come from? Hmm. What? Some sort of surprise. Where have you come from? Satan answered the Lord and said, From roaming about on earth and walking around on it. Hmm. The Lord said to Satan, Have you considered? I know you think I'm reading verse number one, or chapter one again, but I'm not. <laughs> He says, have you considered my servant Job? For there is no one like him on earth, blameless and upright man, fearing God and turning away from evil. Watch this. And he still holds fast to his integrity. Wow. Mm. All right. Although you incited me against him to ruin him without cause. Mm. I want you to look at somebody and give him the stank face. <laughs> Look at him and say, your name came up again. Your name came up again. Your name came mm. up again. No, you didn't say it like you meant it. Say, your name came up again. Your name came up again. You may be seated in the Lord's house. It was Maya Angelou who said, and I quote, my mission in life is not merely to survive, but thrive, end quote. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna need a little bit more from you today. I said it earlier, I'm gonna need you to talk back to me a little bit today. If you're part of the Pros and Chosen, uh, I'm gonna be praying for you because <laughs> we started a new sermon series, most of you know, mm -hmm. uh, we started a new sermon series titled Survivor Mode. Watch this, and this series was to help us, say us, us. Uh, Say it us like you mean. Say us. us. To realize, though we're in a, a hard time right now in America, we're, we're going through some difficult times right now in America. I mean, who, who, can, who can predict what may be happening when we get home on, on CNN today? Who can predict what, what's going to come out of, of, of the White House or the Oval Office? Who can predict? And although we're going through some troubling times right now, God has his hands on us. Say us. 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 And that when we come out of this thing, we're going to come out of this thing calling ourselves survivors. Amen. Amen. Yes. So last week, I introduced you to a dude named Joe. Hmm. See, see, I like the Bible because the Bible calls Job a man who is upright and who has integrity. I, I, I love it because God, the same thing uh, transpires in, in chapter number two, in chapter number one, and then we see it repeated again in chapter number two. See, in case you missed it last week, I told you there was three things about Job that I like and that I'm praying for every man in this church to have. Who was here? Who remembered last week what the three things were? Okay, nobody does. Nobody's paying attention. But last week, I told you there was three things. You remember, I know Job had what? Great faith. Great faith. Great, great family and great finances. See, see, I, I've been praying for, for eight years. I've been pastor Light of Life Church for eight years, and, and I still don't know what I'm doing. By the way. <laughs> Trust me, it's all me. I wake up some mornings and say, God, why me? Why me, God? He says, because I chose you. And I didn't qualify the call, I qualified you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But, 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 but I've been praying for eight years that I will find men in the Manassas area that will join this church, that will practice great faith, because great, Job has great faith, and, and, and great faith means, the Bible says that he woke up early in the morning and prayed over his children. He said, just in case one of my children sinned against me or, or, or shamed God, I want to pray for him. He had great family. I, I did tell you last week that Job had ten kids. I said, oh my goodness. <laughs> and we'll talk about Mitchell later. But, but great family, and then he had great finances because the Bible says that he was the richest man in the whole land. Say great faith. Great 
Great family. Great family. Great family. Great finances. Great finances. And then we saw in verse, in chapter number two, you guys, you had to be here. Was you not watching last week? Did you get, are you going to get the DVD and try to catch up? <laughs> are you going to binge watch all my sermons in New Jersey? Are you going to just binge watch the last six years and you just going to go ahead and start watching? But I told you last week that it was God who offered up Job and Satan never requested Job. Come on. See, it's a trick when, when your name comes up and, and it was God who said, have you considered my servant Job? And, and Satan was just walking around the earth doing what he did, kicking his rank, messing up folks' marriages, trying to get people high, trying to get people with attitudes, trying to make sure that people is doing anything other than following the word of God. Come on, somebody. How many know that Satan, his, his number one goal is to pull you out of purpose? His number one goal is to pull you away from God. And he don't mind if you get saved, although he, he hates it when you do. But once you get saved, now he's coming to try to get you away from me in first lady. He's trying to get you away from the church. He don't like nothing to do with church. Matter of fact, he hates church so much because he can't do church like you can do church now. He hates church so much because you know he used to be on the praise team. He hates church so much, and now he can't worship God because you worship the God. So now he hates you because you're doing what he used to do. And then in chapter 2 of Job, the same God recommends the same Satan, the same Job, to the same devil. Come on. Which hence. Your name came up again. Look at it with me in verse number one. Again, there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord and say he came and rest them as himself. Verse number two says that the, the Lord said to Satan, where have you come from? Satan says, I've come from roaming around the earth seeing who I've married, I can mess up and who I can jack up. This is what Satan's job is to do, is to pull you out. He's trying to walk around. There's something about walking around like a, the Bible said he walks around like a, Lion. Roaring lion. Do you know that if a, ro a lion is roaring, you can hear him and you got plenty of chance to run? Mm. Mm. Come on. Oh, I'm, I'm teaching right. way better than you responding right, right now. Yes, See, sir. some of y'all hear Butch calling, and you still answer. Y'all not going to talk back to me today. I'm going to come at you with oh, both barrels loaded. If you don't say nothing back, if you don't stand up and shout amen, if you don't say nothing today, I'm coming up your street, walk up on your porch, ring your doorbell, sit in your couch, and drink your Kool Aid. <laughs> because if you hear he coming, you should run. If you know she, <laughs> pastor. <laughs> but I love him. Pastor, I love him. He only shot me one time. <laughs> Hello? Somebody said, run for us, run! <laughs> did, did, did I tell you last week? And I don't know, I think I told you last week. See, Job had 7,000 sheep. He had 3,000 cattle. He had 500 teams of oxen. He had 500 female donkeys. But did I tell you last week that Job also lost all 10 of his kids? Mm -hmm. Did I tell you that Job lost everything in just one single day? And did I tell you that, that, that you got, you got to read this. You got to go back and read Job 1, verses 13 through 20. Because every time Job, somebody knocked at Job, said, Job, your, your whole kingdom, everything gone, Job. Job, your business is gone. Job, your house is gone. Job, your land is gone. Somebody came and took this. And then right there, around, around verse 17, the whole house collapsed and kills all of his kids. Wow. But guess what Job had the nerve to do? Because in verse, I'm just giving you the backdrop because y'all didn't watch the movie, the whole movie. He said in, in, in Job 1, verse number 21 to 22, somewhere around that, he said Job just went to worshiping and praising. Come on. He just went to worshiping and praising. He just went to throwing his hands up and worshiping and praising because the one thing that the devil thought about, he said, I just knew. I just knew I had him until he became a worshiper. I just knew I had him because I killed everything that he had. I destroyed his land. I destroyed his people. And I killed everything he had. So the first thing that literally comes out of the text is we see a repeated recommendation. Mm. 
you saw what you were waiting for. See, Job now is probably starting to wonder, hey, why is he picking on me? And I've told you before, some of you are being picked on because you've been picked out. Mm. Mm. Okay. So you keep sitting on hey. your gift. Keep sitting on your gift. And, and see what your name come up. <laughs> keep sitting on your gift and thinking, well, well, I don't know. You know what to do. You just got to go do it. You just got to go do it. You got to make sure that whatever God has called you to do, you pray about it, you come to me, you come to First Lady, you come to Deacon Libby, you come to one of the deacons of the church. And you say, what? I, I believe God is telling me I'm supposed to be in a parking ministry, even though we not parking. Right now. Hey, I believe that God is telling me that I should be more connected somehow in the ministry right now because great, great message yesterday for, for uh, Minister Rick uh, on training our leaders and everything about <laughs> this is good. So you have to do something. You have to do something until you figure out what God is called, what your purpose is. Yeah. But watch this because chapter four and five is a trick. Because, because, watch this, Satan answers the Lord and says, skin for skin. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm feeling a disconnect from the pew and the pulpit here. Skin for skin, yes, all that a man has, he will give his life. I gotta explain that. All that a man has, he will give his life. However, put forth your hand now, now. Don't do it later. Put forth your hand now and touch his bones and his flesh, and he'll curse you to your face. See, did I tell you last week that Satan had the nerve to suggest that Job was not in love with God? He was only lusting after mm -hmm. God because God kept giving him stuff. Did I tell you last week that the only reason that, that, that Job had to lose his children, had to lose his sheep, had to lose his camel, had to lose all his house, had to lose his Rolex, had to lose his Tesla, had to lose his little spot down in the Caribbean, that the only reason that you are, are, are praising him because you, you took all his stuff, but you didn't touch his body. Mm. Right. So that's why Satan says skin for skin. Because the, the, the brother wouldn't give up Anything, he, 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 he came out of this as a survivor. But Satan says, skin for skin. Not only do I see a repeated recommendation, but secondly, I see an unconvinced enemy. Mm. Mm. You're not killing me. Mm. Okay. See, see, what had happened was, after I told you all of this, Satan now insinuates that Job is being selfish because he's not dead and everybody else is. Mm. And, and to a level of certain degree that is some type of uncertainty here, there's some ambiguity here. Why in the world would he praise you now? And I just told you in the pre-show especially that the only reason now that God, Satan is not really mad at Job, he's mad at God because Job was doing what Satan can't do no more. Come on. Mm. Opportunity to praise and you sit on your praise. Come on, come on. You have the opportunity to run, shout, dance, and we sit on it. Mm. Watch this. But back in the day, we would turn the club out. Ooh. Ooh. Say it, Pastor. Don't burn the Stay with me. Today, I think today, I, I don't even know because I, I'm, I'm not that dude no more. The Washington football team. <laughs> okay, okay no get a clean shot. Get a clean shot. <laughs> no the Washington football team will perform. You think they're going to ever win a game? Oh. I know. Some people will leave the church because of that. <laughs> but there will be thousands of people who can't go to the game but will turn their home into a sanctuary and lose their minds. Come on. Lose their minds over a first down. 
Because I don't know how many touchdowns they're going to get. <laughs> well, it depends on who they play. They're playing the Browns. Now they may win. I don't know. I don't know. I'm just saying. But we have this opportunity to praise God on Sunday, and we don't. But at around 4 o'clock, 1 o'clock, when the, I wasn't going to call them their old name, but the Washington football team, we praise them like we just don't care. And it behooves me, why do we do that? Because, because I don't understand, and maybe it's just me, and I used to be there, and I, I know because I'm a sports guy, but thank God I've been delivered. Hmm. Hallelujah. <laughs> thank God that right now my whole life is not depicted on, on who won and what the score was. Thank, thank God right now I'm not more concerned about, about what the name going to be versus what the next Bible verse is that I'm going to read. Come on. Thank God I'm not so caught up in who's winning the NBA championship. <laughs> and remember, I told you last week in the introduction that Joe lost everything. He lost everything he had. He lost his houses. He lost his cars. He lost, I'm just talking about the cars thing. Maybe some of y'all get that. They're like, I ain't no cars. Did they? Did they have cars? But he lost his children. And Satan has the nerve to suggest or insinuate that the only reason that Job is still praising because you haven't touched his body. So y'all just get out, you took all that, but you haven't touched him, you haven't touched him. And, 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 and skin for skin, and I guarantee you he'll curse you to your face. And, and then I love the message Bible because verse number six in the message Bible says this, it's on your screen on your lower third, it says, God answers, all right, do what you like with him but mine you can't get mm -hmm. thank you mm -hmm. thank you mm -hmm. see there was some stuff that was designed to kill you that you escaped come on thank you God thank you God <laughs> okay thank okay you. okay I told you I'm ringing your doorbell I'm about to come in your house thank I'm about you. to come up with your come door on. there was some people that you dated that was designed that was supposed to kill you come you on you know it yeah. Yeah. the only reason the only reason The only reason they asked you for your number because little do you know you was on assignment that the devil was on assignment and he called one of his imps to kill you because he already knew that God had you in purpose and if you ever get in purpose you was going to change your whole neighborhood if you only knew what God was going to do for you if you only knew that God the plans that God has for you is for not to harm you but for you to prosper come here Isaiah come here come here Jeremiah come here Jeremiah but God says, if I let you do what I called you to do, but guess who else heard your call? Satan. Because somehow he peeked into your future and said, if I ever get that girl to go through the one-year Bible plan, she's going to be something regular. If I ever get that girl to go to First Lady's Bible study virtually, <laughs> why ain't I it's virtual. Well, I don't know about the drive. It's virtual. If I can never get that brother to log on to the men of vision and purpose on Tuesday night at 7 o'clock, look, well, Pastor, I don't, I'm busy. I work. It's virtual. If I can ever get you to walk in the purpose that God has for you, man, you would be something to reckon with. Come on. Oh, my goodness. Oh, thank you. Did I tell you last week that? It's only a test. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Did I tell you last week that it was a test and the test don't start until something gets taken or somebody gets taken? Come on. Mm -hmm. come, on. Come, on. All right, come on. That's so good. Did I tell you last week that this is all a test? Did I tell you that God is not going to let you have, let you go through more than you can handle? Did I tell you last week that, <laughs> Did I tell you last week that this is a test? Did I tell you maybe, maybe since your name came up, God is trying to see if you will pass the test. Maybe, maybe you catching the hell you catching right now. I'm not talking about here. I'm talking about somebody. I'm talking to somebody who's watching me right now from Alaska. I'm talking to somebody right here who's going to watch me later on. I'm talking about somebody who's going to watch me on the YouTube channel later on at 6 o'clock. I love you. But maybe you're going through what you're going through right now because your name came up again. Mm 
Come on. Maybe you can't, maybe you lost some stuff, you lost somebody, but God is waiting for you to praise him. God is waiting for you, for him to, for you to praise him in the middle of your storm, in the middle of your mess, in the middle of the stuff that you're going through. God is looking for you. All you got to do is praise him. Even when you can't trust me, you got to praise me. Even when you can't trust me, you got to praise me. Even when you can't figure out why the corona is here, you better praise me. Job lost his family. Job lost his wealth. And this week we see that Job will lose his health. It's right there in verse number seven. So Satan left the Lord's presence and he struck Job with terrible boils from head to toe. Job was scraping his skin with a piece of broken pottery as he was sitting amongst the ashes. You're not feeling it. Mm. See, Job had boils all over his body. And see, ew, this, ew, this is disgusting. You, you see, Job, Job had these sores. And in and, and, and the Bible, one of the versions said that, that Job had these sores and they had maggots coming out all out of them. And, and they were was, they was scaling. And, and, and then when you push them on it, the pus coming out of it. And, 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 and it was just so bad. He was losing weight. And, and oh my God, this was just disgusting. And then he was restless. And then he was in these pain. And then his wife, he was trying to touch his wife, but he had foul breath. And I was okay, because I was praying for Job, and I was thinking about Job, and I'm like, and I feel, I'm like, feel Job, oh God. And then I, I started thinking about the thing, and then I thought about it for a minute, and then I said, whoa, 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 because I, I can kind of concur, I can kind of understand that somebody going through, you want to be with them, you want to have them out, you want to pull them together, and then, then, and then, and then it happened because in verse number nine, because because I said, oh no, not his wife, not Miss Job. Not the apple of his eye, not the darling, his darling wife, not the mother of his ten kids. And, and everybody hates on Miss Job, but Miss Job had something going on. She, she, had, she was in some pain because the Bible says right here in verse number nine, it says his wife said to him, are you still holding and maintaining your integrity? Job, mm -hmm. my kids is dead. Joe, we ain't got no money. Joe, you, Joe, we lost everything. Joe, we sent 7,000 sheep. We had sent 3,000 camels. We had, some, we had 500, Joe, teams of oxen. Joe, we had 500 servants. We got nothing. And you still trying to hold on to your integrity? Curse God and die. talk to every brother in here who's watching me right now, whether it's via satellite, social media, or you sitting here in this crowded church. Don't you date no girl who's not going to stand with you when your name come up. Mm. Yeah. 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 Oh, my single brothers, you better find you a woman who's going to be with you when your name come up. Oh, yeah, I know she got a cute shape. Mm -hmm. She fine, yeah, she everything you like. The devil know what you like. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she, she mm -hmm. yeah, she got it all. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. she got it all. But does she know Jesus? Mm. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh what? She can make macaroni and cheese from scratch. <laughs> you know that's a game changer right there. <laughs> <laughs> that's a game changer right there. <laughs> <laughs> What? And she made cornbread from scratch? Yes. She know how to season her greens? Oh, oh, okay, 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 I got, I got a lot of my Hispanic members in here that Woo. she know how to make roast con <laughs> Jesus. Mm. Mm. And every 
Everybody hates on Miss Job. Everybody hates on her. But have you ever considered for just one moment that she that she is in so much grief because although we lost ten, I carried ten. Yes, Ooh. come on. Ooh. All ten of them came out of me, and you just want me to sit back and be silent. And nevertheless, you and God and Satan have this conversation, and y'all don't tell me. Mm. Mm. Wow. Because I doubted she even knew what was going on. Because this dude certainly didn't know. Nobody came up to her and said, hey, listen, we want to get your permission to mess with your husband. They didn't do that. God didn't say, hey, Miss Job, we're going to mess with Mr. Job, and me and Satan going to hook up, and we're going to let Job's name come up, and we're going to take everything. You think she would agree to that? No. But not only do did we see a repeated recommendation. And then secondly, we saw an unconvinced enemy. But I like Job's response because now we see a powerful perspective. Yes. Come on, yes. It's on the screen. Look at verse number 10. It's on the screen. But Job replied, you're talking like a foolish woman. I am saying, Job said. He said, you're talking like a foolish woman. He said, should we accept only good things from the, from the hands of God and never anything bad? Come on. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I mean, for real though, should we, should we only expect the good things from God and praise him because they're good things? And then when God throws a curve or when the devil or when your name comes up and now we don't know what to do, so you want me to curse God and run? So, 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 so when we bought the house, we was praising God. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, Jesus. But when we fell behind on the mortgage, mm. Mm. when you got the job, God, you are so good and worthy to be praised. <laughs> you fired. <clears throat> I ain't like this job anyway. <laughs> <laughs> The same job that you are not afraid that you get and then that you don't like them and they don't like you. <laughs> I told you I'm, I'm about to sit on the couch. I'm going to the refrigerator next. I'm getting the cherry Kool-Aid. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know why they don't like me. They keep messing with me at my job. Well, you late every day. Oh. 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 Teach. You're not doing anything that they hired you to do. You do know. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Facebook. You do know that they pay you to actually come to work. <laughs> On time. You do know that you work for them and they don't work for you. <laughs> you do know that you're supposed to be there at seven, not seven oh five. Teachers. You do know that you only have 30 minutes for lunch and not an hour? <laughs> okay, you do know Fridays is not mandatory that you leave at 12? <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Because it always... It always gets into my spirit why, why people don't understand why your name come up and you praise God in the good times or when the bad come. And, and most of the time, most of the time, it could be God, but some of the time, it's you who causes the disturbance and then we blame it on the devil. Mm. <laughs> it's not the devil. The devil didn't get in your alarm clock. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I always said, uh, yeah, you know, I, you know, I, you know, it was the devil. The devil got in my alarm. The devil ain't had nothing to do with your alarm. <laughs> Stop blaming the devil. Snooze. <laughs> Somebody say ouch. Ouch. <laughs> what was I talking about first day? The test. <laughs> because there's a test that's going on, and the test that's going on, Job, after all of this, Job never cursed God. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. See, see, even when Miss Joe gets a little upset and says, we, we have literally have a right right now. We, we have a right to, to just lose it. We got a right, right, Joe? We should leave that church mm. Mm. because that pastor has not called me 
in seven months. That first lady has not called me in seven months, and I don't care nothing about no corona. I know I'm supposed to get a call every other week from him and her just for me to tell them what we told, I told them last week. And although I did not change and did what nothing they told me to do, they are supposed to shh. I ain't do nothing they told me to do. I'm still doing the same stuff. I'm still high on crack every week. I'm still smoking 40s. Did you smoke? Drake 40s. Stop, stop. You don't. Know. But I know they're supposed to call me. So we sent out the survey. I'm pretty sure about 300, 400, maybe, I don't know, I could be exactly right. Every preacher exaggerates this number. Three, 400 people active in this church right now. Even if you don't come, we see you once a month, once a year, whatever. Back when we was in the theater. But, but, but we sent out the survey because we try to stay connected. Say connected. connected. We try to stay connected to the people. And do you know less than 100 people sent the survey back? That's in my notes. That's not in my notes. That's for free. <laughs> because when people don't feel connected, people start to drift off. And I forgot who it was. One of one of these smart people, smarter than I, that said, "People don't care how much you know until they know how much you care." Mm -hmm. So we send out surveys and we try to get more connected to people because we love our people. We pray for our people. This, which is why we have the three, the, the, the prayer call three times a day, seven, noon, and six, because we want to stay connected to our people. Thank you, Samuel. Thank you, Ken. Thank you, Reggie. Thank you, Deacon Libby. Thank you, Jacinta. All of those who pray. Because, because, oh, okay, 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 okay. they doing what they're supposed to do. Uh, but, 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 but do you still know that we still can't hardly find people to pray? Uh -huh. Come on, come on. Selma, I, Selma, give me five dollars when you take me at the end of service. She back there going, tell them, Pastor. <laughs> <laughs> but Joe never, never cursed God. He's passing the test. Amen. And, and, and beloved, I, I, I realize that there's more to this story that I cannot go forward next week until I come back with another sequel. Come on. Come on. I can't stop it at Job 2 because how many know that you get double for your troubles? Mm, come on. Hallelujah. So, Pastor, what are you trying to tell us this morning? Oh, okay, I'm glad you asked. I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you're listening because whatever you do, when your name come up, don't fail the test. Ooh, yeah. You don't have to be doing nothing wrong for your name to come up. Come on, mm. come on, say it. You, you don't have to be out here doing all of those crazy things that people do. None of y'all do, I'm sure. But your name could come up and you don't know why you're in the storm. But be like Job and don't, don't just say I'm throwing in the towel. And although, beloved, I know the coronavirus is a serious thing, man. Wear your mask, do your social distance, or physical distance, I like to call it. Wash your hands twice. Say your ABCs, whatever it is that works for you. But what do you do when your name keeps coming up? Maybe it's God's trying to get your attention. Okay, maybe you're not like Job and you didn't lose sheep and camels and cars and trucks and houses and land, but maybe you did. Maybe the reason relationships can't keep working is because you are not doing everything that God calls you to do and maybe now you're not walking in the purpose and the will of God and your name keeps coming up. But one thing that I know for sure that Jeremiah, again, 29, 11 says, the plans that I have for you. Come on. Although, let me, let me help that because I got seven scholarly people watching me right now because that scripture applies to not, not one particular person. It's to Jerusalem. But the plans that God has for you is not to hurt you or harm you, but for you to prosper. And then I thought about it this morning because you know me, but first lady, she loves Old Testament stuff. I'm kind of a New Testament guy. And then I said to myself, I said, God, where is Jesus in all of this? And, and 
somebody truthfully said, well, Jesus does not appear until the new covenant. I like covenant versus testament because we only see Jesus comes on the scene like a record machine in, 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 in Matthew. And we see what Jesus does. And then I'm thinking about it and I'm saying, oh, my goodness. He was there the whole time. Yes. Mm. Because I was reminded of the B clause in 1 Peter 5, 10, because the B clause in 1 Peter 5, 10 says, after you have suffered for a little while. Come on, a little while. He, who is he? Jesus. Somebody say his name, Jesus. Jesus. After you have suffered for a little while, he will restore, support, Come on. strengthen you, and he will place you on a firm foundation. Thank you, God. Thank you. to Christ. Maybe you've never said the prayer of salvation. If I'm talking to you, would you just text us real quick? I promise we promise you we'll text you. We'll call you. Not even going to text you back. We're going to call you. The number's at the bottom of your screen, 571-926-3185. For those of you who are watching on Facebook Live, maybe you're watching later on tonight on the YouTube. Thank God for Light of Life Church YouTube channel, Light of Life Church Manassas. If I'm talking to you, Texas. We put that number out there, man. Believe me, we get all kinds of stuff coming, but guess what? It's worth it to us because we want to make sure that we have an opportunity to reach more people. Maybe you've given your life to Christ and you want to rededicate. Maybe you want to know why your name keeps coming up and you want to walk right now in the purpose and the will that God has called. Our intercessors are praying. I'm watching them now. They're praying and we're asking for more people to come and more people to join the kingdom because right now we all need Jesus. If I'm talking to you, maybe you want to be a part of Light of Life Church. Man, we would love to have you. Man, I know we're not meeting right now in a theater, but I think this little crowd of 20 or so people is doing well, but man, I'm telling you, thousands are watching via Facebook. So we call you Light of Life Nation. If you want to be a part of Light of Life Nation, just throw your thumbs up and call in Texas. 
Texas, 571-926-3185. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. God is so good. And if any one of those invitations apply to you, please don't sit back and not text that number. Amen? Amen. Come on, somebody, let's give God a hand.
or crowded. Or crowded. It looks crowded. <laughs> Wise and eternal God in heaven, Father, we thank you for allowing us to teach and preach your word today. Yes, Lord God, thank you. God, what an awesome and mighty God you are. God, thank you for those who surrendered to you today. Yes. Thank you for those who submitted to you today. But God, as we leave this place, but never from your presence, would you place an angel of protection around each and every one of us? For those of you who are watching virtually, God, will you give them the best day that they've ever had? God, we will give you all praise, glory, and honor. It's in Jesus' name we pray.